Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, Multicenter Study of Genotype-Guided Tamoxifen Dosing increases active metabolite exposure in women with reduced CYP2D6 metabolism by William J. Irvin, Jr. et al. My name is Brian Leyland Jones, and I am Professor and Georgia Research Alliance Distinguished Scholar at the Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. My speciality is medical oncology. I give this podcast on behalf of myself and my two colleagues, Meredith Regan and Mark Buzik, who have been integral in our team's investigations of the role of cytochrome P450 subunit 2D6, or CYP2D6 for short, genotyping, and tamoxifen treatment for breast cancer. The Irvin et al. manuscript is an excellent contribution to the field, which achieves exactly what it intended to do, i.e., it demonstrates that pharmacogenomics knowledge can be successfully used to manage drug concentrations, specifically CYP2D6 genotype and tamoxifen. In spite of this being a relatively small study of 100 patients, the study was well designed and statistically powered for the primary objective, to detect a change in plasma indoxifen levels corresponding with a change in tamoxifen dose from the clinical standard of 20 mg to 40 mg within the IM intermediate metabolism CYP2D6 genotype group. The authors first documented that in fact indoxifen concentrations were statistically different on 20 mg of tamoxifen between extensive, intermediate, and poor metabolizer groups. They demonstrated that doubling the dose raised indoxifen concentrations on average by 7.6 nanograms per ml, which is about 40% higher in the IM patients. To the extent that differences in indoxifen concentrations between EM and IM groups were no longer statistically significant. Noteworthy in this manuscript are one, state-of-the-art methodology for assessing CYP2D6 variants and polymorphisms, two, the use of standard curves and quality controls being run with each sample batch, three, the inclusion of a significant percentage of African-American patients in which they found the allele frequency of reduced metabolism alleles was greater in African-Americans than in other patients. We believe that the discussion is very thoughtful, aligns the results beautifully in the face of the most recent research findings, and is completely on target, most especially noting that the precise clinically relevant indoxifen concentrations is indeed unknown, and the efficacy of tamoxifen appears not to be solely mediated via indoxifen. So how do we put these findings all into context in the summer of 2011? Early clinical investigations showed promise that CYP2D6 pharmacogenetic testing of reduced tamoxifen metabolism could predict poorer disease control. The underlying hypothesis was that CYP2D6 polymorphisms leading to reduced CYP2D6 enzyme activity resulted in lower plasma concentrations of endoxifen, which adversely impacts tamoxifen efficacy. However, in multiple clinical investigations, 
the results were conflicting and complicated by study designs using small clinical trials, varying patient populations and endpoint definition, as well as different techniques to measure genotype, different allelic combinations tested, lack of standardization of definition of CYP2D6 metabolism phenotype, together with regional and time-linked variation regarding the concomitant use of CYP2D6 inhibitors with tamoxifen. Indeed, at the 2010 San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, Dr. Matthew Gertz of the Mayo Clinic referred to 178 publications that had been indexed in PubMed between 2003 and 2010, searching CYP2D6 and tamoxifen, with 14 separate studies demonstrating a positive association between CYP2D6 genotype or inhibitor use with clinical outcome, and 15 studies showing no association between CYP2D6 genotype or drug inhibitor use and breast cancer outcome. At that meeting, two pivotal presentations from the Big 198 and ATAC clinical trials groups did not find an association between CYP2D6 phenotype and control of breast cancer recurrence. Both studies concluded that CYP2D6 pharmacogenetic testing was not justified to determine whether tamoxifen should be given to postmenopausal patients. Hence, the significance of both the underlying hypothesis and the critical role of indoxifen was called into question. Indeed, previous published work by Professor Mitch Dowsett of the Royal Marsden Hospital Institute of Cancer Research had shown that in tamoxifen and metabolites N-desmethyl tamoxifen, didesmethyl tamoxifen, and 4-hydroxytamoxifen saturated estrogen receptor with 99.94% occupancy in postmenopausal women. As the Irving manuscript summarizes, possibly making endoxifen activity less relevant. Whereas the Irving study produced its desired goal, the, de the detailed observations in the manuscript are fascinating. For example, eight of the EM patients actually had a marked decrease in endoxifen concentrations between tamoxifen dosing of 20 and 40 milligrams, and eight actually had concentrations similar to poor metabolizers. This demonstrates the wide patient-to-patient -patient variability in plasma concentrations of tamoxifen metabolites within CYP2D6 genotype groups. Moreover, in spite of doubling the dose of tamoxifen from 20 to 40 milligrams in the IM group, the actual increases in endoxifen levels were relatively modest in terms of hard numbers from medians of 18.5 to 21.8 nanograms per ml. The authors appropriately point out that if they were to extrapolate their data in order to achieve EM concentrations in the PM group may require doses exceeding 100 milligrams. In the light of the preceding paragraph, one has to question what is the rationale for doing this, especially, as the authors point out, significantly increased doses of tamoxifen are associated with increased toxicities. Indoxifen is interesting, per se, in that it appears to have a different mechanism of action from the 4-hydroxytamoxifen metabolite by targeting ER-alpha for degradation as opposed to stabilizing ER-alpha, and also by inhibiting estradiol-mediated upregulation of amphiregulin, a ligand of IGFR. The interest in indoxifen is such that indoxifen citrate and Z-indoxifen hydrochloride are being developed as therapeutics. Hence, our read is that if one is interested in indoxifen, we should study it as a molecular entity rather through, than through manipulation of tamoxifen dose. The manuscript authors have now completed accrual to a 500-patient expansion study, which will provide more information about the poor metabolism group. But the gap in the field is that no one has measured the direct correlation of indoxifen levels with clinical outcome of breast cancer patients. Hopefully, 
this goal will be achieved in future trials. Moreover, the role of CYP2D6 in premenopausal women is unknown. For premenopausal patients, investigation of pharmacogenetic testing is ongoing in the TEX and SOF trials. However, regrettably, we will again not have correlation with endoxivant levels in those trials. Hence, in summary, this study achieves its goals of genotype guided tamoxifen dosing, which increased endoxifen concentrations in women with reduced CYP2D6 metabolism. The authors themselves declare that the precise clinically relevant endoxifen concentration is unknown, that tamoxifen efficacy is not solely mediated via endoxifen, and that they did not have outcomes. Whereas the significance of endoxifen in relationship to tamoxifen efficacy has been overall diminished by recent observations, endoxifen still remains a compound of great interest, and we look forward to its development as a therapeutic entity and the result of the 500-patient expansion pharmacogenomic study. We conclude by again con congratulating the authors on filling in another piece of the CYP2D6 tamoxifen metabolism jigsaw puzzle, but remind our clinical colleagues that this does not impact patient care at this time. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.